I've got the absolute pleasure to, yes, I got that, to introduce to you the lovely Rodolfo De Angeli, all the way from Italy, now from Melbourne. So I'll let him introduce himself in a minute. Thank you so much for being here this morning. Absolutely <laughs> an honor. Oh, now I hear myself again. Perfect. So I've got you back. And a very quick pre story to how Rodolfo and I met. We literally only just met last week on a platform called Podmatch. And no, it's not a dating app. It's actually where podcast guests and podcast interviewers meet each other to share stories that inspire the world. And uh, Rodolfo actually addressed me to interview me for his, his podcast. But when I heard his story, I said, you need to come to my uh, interview series, Upsell Grief. I really love uh, what you have, uh, not so much what you've been through, but despite what you've been through, how you navigated through it. And uh, you've got quite a story to tell. So without further ado, would you do me the honor to introduce yourself briefly to the audience? And then we go into a few questions, if that's okay with you. Absolutely. Ciao, Rodolfo. Absolutely. First of all, Maria, I, I thank you so much. I mean, it's, I am humbled. Um, I really feel super blessed to be here, you know, I mean, it's easy to say, yeah, but, um, you know, every time when, when we get the chance to express, when we get the chance to share our story, it's a blessing, you know, and, and that comes from me from I a agree. little lesson I received in the Amazon jungle by a, a, a gentleman actually from Austria uh, that really? actually explained yeah. to me the significance of the word guru. And I always saw the guru was the beauty man, spiritual man from India, but the word guru actually means men of weight, men of wow. weight, right? Wow. And he expressed to me that the that. words that we have, they have weights, right? Mm -hmm. They have a weight when we express ourselves. And yeah. it's very important to be mindful for that, um, yeah. of that. And so when I am... Um, I guess so when I'm invited or I, or I get the chance to speak, it's a true honor. It's a true honor. So I thank you <laughs> so much for, for you. having me. Um, yeah. About me, a little bit about me. You know, my name is Rodolfo, like, like Marie just said, from Italy, living in Melbourne now. Um, I, my past was, you know, construction and I had a, a, a 22 staff construction business that turned mm. over seven figures, but eventually collapsed for you know, a wrong venture I went in and um, today I'm a coach. Today I'm yeah. a coach. I'm a, I'm a <laughs> That's very short coach. <laughs> and, a, and a podcast, right? Yeah. And, and, uh, and a practitioner of uh, Andean shamanism. So mm -hmm. my story or my journey just completely pivoted from yeah. starting as a bricklayer at 14 to then mm -hmm. turning my life around pretty much 11 years ago after my attempted suicides. So, yeah. It's really brief. Wow. I'm sure we go through the story, wow. yes. you know, along the way. So, absolutely, and this is like for me because I already know a little bit of your story, and I said let's unpack it a little bit further in front of my audience because I always like um, when we do this live because it really gives it a, a very different feel when we don't go into too much detail. Uh, yet I know a few details, and for you to now say that in literally a couple of sentences, it's like. Ugh breathtaking like literally when you think about you know your your business that has gone to seven figures that was really highly successful uh to completely pivoting suicide uh in between like you know the the source of suicide attempted suicide we we go into that in a little bit more detail in a minute and uh you know the whole company collapsing and then your training as a coach in shamanism i absolutely love this so much in those couple of sentences where you're like, I'm blown away for you to just say that. It's like, no, 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 I did this, 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 and that. And then, you know, like, whoa, there is a whole lifetime in between uh, that right. other people don't even pack in one lifetime. So let's maybe rewind um, mm -hmm. because you, if you don't mind, I, I know I would actually like to start with your upbringing. And uh, when you, when you mentioned the word guru, it brought back, um, the thoughts, the things that you shared about your dad, I'd actually really like to start there because uh, there was also a broken marriage somewhere in between in all of that. I know about that. And I'd, I'd really like to start with that, if that's okay with you. Tell me a little bit about your upbringing. Yeah, my upbringing, Marie, was quite, um, uh, it, it was quite a, a journey. 
in itself. I was uh, actually given away by my parents when I was eight months old. Um, yeah. They migrated from Italy to Switzerland and uh, they, uh, they were poor just after the war and they tried mm. to make a better living and give the family what they never had. But eventually yeah. in 1969, I was born and I kind of like disrupted the whole plan and, uh, mm. and they had to make a decision. They had to make a decision that, you know, in my upbringing and until 40 of, years of my life, I kind of uh, resented them and so on and so forth. So I grew up with foster parents until the age of 11. Mm -hmm. um, so I didn't have a family, didn't have my family, didn't know who my parents were. I, I would see him every so often because they would pick mm -hmm. me up for a, for a day or two during the weekend, but I didn't know who they were. I, I eventually, yeah. I, I used to say to my mom, I want to go back to mom. And my mom would say, I'm yeah. your mom. But it yeah. was such a confusion. So confusion, yeah, absolutely for a child. When I, when I went back at 11, you know, there is my father, there's my mother. I don't know them. And, mm. you know, eventually, um, I don't even know. I tried to fit in somewhere. I didn't know where yeah. I belong, right? Mm. And um, eventually I got uh, sexually abused by a family member. Mm. And, um, and my life kind of like took a kind of a, like a weird turn, trying to be loved at all costs and trying to be seen. Yeah. You know, I was a gold medalist. We just had the Olympics not long ago, but mm. I would have been a gold medalist in people pleasing um yeah. you know so a lot of a lot of trauma like that that you know every, even so subtle will just enter my life every you yeah. know just just constantly eventually i thought like you would just say before uh, you know about marriage I, I thought to get married you know i found a, 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 a lovely girl at the time i was 19 and eventually we mm. married and I didn't know who I was. I didn't know how a man was and, and what a man was. I, I was seeing my father, which was super jealous and possessive to my mother. So I thought that mm. is the way to be. Yeah. And perhaps that will connect me to him, right? Mm. And get that love that I crave so much. But uh, obviously, as you can imagine, it didn't work with my marriage because that failed after four months as I walk in yeah. and I found my wife at the time with someone else. Mm. Um, so that, 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 that the whole story from, it, it just kept on spiraling. I didn't know how to get out of this vortex of just, you know, going around. And yeah. eventually I, I was, uh, I was in prison in my late twenties. I, uh, uh, you know, was associated with some, you know, uh, stuff. And eventually I was, I was locked in prison. And when I come out, I didn't have anything, anyone, no money. And I was homeless. Uh, mm. You know, living wow. on the streets of Bern. How old, how old were you at that time? I was uh, 30, uh, just 30, 31. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. that was a moment where, you know, I thought, okay, I, I need to make a change, you know, and mm. um, I made Do you grace. remember what the, what the pivotal moment was for you? Because, you know, up until then, as you said, you were pretty much a gold medalist in people placing and, and, I um, have noticed a lot through working with people over the years that um, there is a lot of self-neglect in that when you constantly try to please others that you really neglect yourself and who you truly are and you really hinder that self-development the knowing and getting to know yourself and who you are, which most people do predominantly in those really, really crucial years. Um, from you know seven to fourteen, that rebellion phase against the parents, and uh, sorry, that's the modeling phase, and then you have the rebellion phase, so, and then from fourteen to twenty-one. So in those years, this is such an important stage for people to find themselves to develop who they are, and this is where you still had to get used to who are these people that call themselves my parents. You didn't oh. even know anyone, so you had um, you had a pretty rough start, and then you know you you went down the wrong road. You ended up in prison you got out where was that pivotal moment where you thought hold on I think I've taken the world on from a completely different angle I need to do something different was that one moment was that a gradual awakening how do you how do you feel how can you describe that um I think it happened in a very you know kind of also a, a funny way if you wish because mm. it was uh 2001 and uh I was helping a friend of mine back then in Switzerland uh, with his computer and um, 
he was talking about this, uh, you know, at the time there was a, there was a, this app called ICQ, which I only later mm -hmm. understood that it, I know what that it one. meant because it, 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 it was a, you, know, you remember that one day? I do. I used yeah, it. that's that's <laughs> what, so I, now today I know that it's ICQ, right? Back then mm -hmm. I'm an Italian living in Switzerland. For me, it's yeah. ICQ, but it doesn't actually make yeah, sense. Yeah, it's just a letter, right? but it, you never heard the sentence. <laughs> I seek you. Yeah, that's right. right. It was that little chatting. The that's little right. Chat. That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because so I, I am there the helping him we out. We all of a sudden, his chat comes up, right? Yeah, and um. I think it was something like uh, age or location. I don't remember something like that. Yeah. But anyway, I answered for him. Yeah. And uh, long story short, she's today my wife. Right? Oh, no way. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So my wife, oh. I, I met my wife on ICQ in 2001. That is so cute. I love it. Yeah. I never heard a yeah. love story that started with ICQ. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. So for me, that was oh man, I gotta go and visit this this girl, right? And uh, and so yeah. I I I actually came to Australia to meet her, and her name is Grace, my wife. And um, you know, how suitable. I realized okay, it's a new start for me. You know, I need I need mm -hmm. to do something. I need to yeah. um, you know, it's a it's a, I I need to have a fresh start. And eventually, three years later or two years later, I I came down two thousand and three. But mm -hmm. what happened is. I, and I can say that today, I mean, we got married in 2010. Um, mm -hmm. And I can see that today with, with total honesty, that perhaps it didn't come exactly for her, but mm -hmm. I was escaping, see? Yeah. I was escaping my past, I was escaping everything I, I had, or yeah. everything I, I, I thought was there that was hunting me down. And so I came over and eventually, you know, we tried a few times, it didn't work out. Again, I wasn't the person, I was definitely I'm not the person that I am today, but I was, you know, fleeing from a place, being here, sunny place, beautiful. And it was amazing for the first year it was bliss. And after a year, it just set in. Because, mm -hmm. you know, and I, uh, and as, as Seneca says, you know, no matter under what sky you would travel, you always travel with yourself. And eventually yeah. I woke up and a year later with all my shit that mm -hmm. needed to be sorted out, needed to be addressed. What did mm -hmm. I do? Pushed it away. Yeah. Don't want to know. Don't want to know. And then mm -hmm. that brought up depression, brought up severe anxiety and so on and so forth, which I had all my life, but I never really had the time to actually understand it. Yeah. And eventually yeah. I arrived to the brink at 2010 where I'm in my garage and uh, I'm looking at a rope and I'm about to jump, you know? And then, and then I looked back and we had a little window uh, that was looking in, into my lounge room. Um, mm -hmm. And I wanted to farewell my, my wife, you know, and it was a kind of like a glass mirror. You couldn't see in from the outside, but, you know, mm -hmm. um, and at that moment, I just, I just got up and looked at her. And at that moment, she just burst out laughing. Like she had this incredible hysterical laugh. She was watching some TV and she was it's like something funny. And she started laughing hysterically. And that moment I said, you know, there has to be more to life than misery. There oh, has wow. to be more to life than misery because wow. I'm about to give up. And she has yeah. a time of her life. Yeah. What am I missing here? Yeah. And that was a moment for me to, that got me on this journey of the past 11 years. Um, Safe by grace. You know, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> right? so and that, that was a time where we grew our business. We, we took everything mm -hmm. to the next level, but this was an address yeah yeah See? so that's successful the on the outside and empty on the inside mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. that's an incredible story i really i really love that you know safe by the laughter of grace that's oh such my a, god that would be the perfect book title oh my god <laughs> the laughter of grace that's amazing that's that's it. yeah amazing absolutely grace. Yeah. that could be that it. could be a book's title right yes absolutely <laughs> yeah so, Rodolfo, I'm, I'm just absolutely blown away by this story because there's there's so much in it. You know, it's it's really incredible having this this very pivotal moment, standing there on the ladder ready to jump, and then you know, being safe for the laughter of praise. I really love that. So how 
how was your wife through that? Did you ever, well, I assume that you would have told her that you attempted suicide in, in that garage, but did you go in and tell her straight away what happened or how did you, did you allow her in, in your healing journey? That's what I want to know. At what point did you allow her in? You know, as a man, Marie, um, as a man, you're always seen as a provider. Mm. And the provider is not someone just that brings food on a table. The provider yeah. is someone also that brings security and mm -hmm. safety and mm. presence. Yeah. Um, something that I couldn't do, you know? Mm. Um, I escaped. I probably escaped all my life, right? Yeah. And I never hid that part. I mean, you know, Grace knew always how I was and, mm. you know, um, and I wasn't a person that with my anxiety or depression, I, was, I wasn't someone that was lashing out or, or abusing mm. her or, or drinking or, mm. you know, drugs or anything like that. For me, my escape was sleep. So mm. I would just sleep all the time. Mm. I was hoping that one morning or one afternoon, because I would sleep and I had panic attack after panic attack. And I would hope that when I wake up, it was gone. It was just gone, mm. you know? So um, Grace has been there the whole way. <laughs> you know, mm. Grace believed in me when I didn't have a clue how mm. to believe in myself. Mm right? She always saw something that I couldn't. And, and eventually, you know, um, eventually we, we found a way to turn it around. And, um, and we embarked on this journey, we both embarked mm. on a journey because, uh, you know, we both had, you know, pain and suffering and whatever, yeah. you know, so it, it has been a really, we call it team blue, you know, we are mm. team blue. Um, mm -hmm. that's because you might see me every day with this t-shirt. I got like 15 of those t-shirts. I don't want to spend time in the morning to check yeah. how I'm going to, that I got blue t-shirts. That's me. That's me. That's that me. sounds like Steve Jobs. You had this whole water <laughs> pool. Like, uh, yeah, this like shirt that he used to wear because it was one less thing to, to decide. Or yeah, to think I, about. I can't be bothered. You know, I'm I, wearing blue today as well. Perfect. As if I would have known. <laughs> Right. So we are um, team blue for life. We always say we yeah. are team blue for life, you know? Yeah. Um, so we really have been on this journey together. And, and funny enough, you know, as I'm going on this process of trying to heal um, mm. and grow my company to seven figures. Yeah. Incredible. The moment it collapsed, two lot. days later, Grace was diagnosed with cancer. Yeah. You know, so all of a sudden we have no money. Everything is gone. Our staff, we yeah. have to ring everybody up. You have no job anymore. We are gone. Yeah. And then two days later, we go to Mornington, which is, you know, Southeast in Melbourne. And we go to this routine check every year, you know, mm. and 6.30 or six o'clock in the evening, half an hour late. And Grace is like, oh, why is she calling me late? Whatever. And eventually, you know, we're sitting in there and, you know, she says, we got your results back, Grace, and um, we found something. And, mm. you know, and I was a much stronger man. I mean, I, uh, there's nothing today that can, man, I, br I bend, but I don't know break. I learned yeah. so much over the last 10 years, mm. over my, my life, mm -hmm. you know, but that moment, there's words, you know, that we, we found yeah. something, you know, breast cancer. I'm like, God, man. Why, why, yeah. why is this perfect for me now? Why are you giving me this? Man, I want to learn. That, that, I, wanna learn. I, I remember to, we I went out. I have here. These are such powerful words, you know? Why do you give this to me now? Why is this perfect for me now? This is incredible to be at a space in your life where you can actually ask yourself the question because most people stop at the why and mm. never ask why is this perfect for me now Absolutely. this is such a i really want to highlight that because that question is incredible to ask yourself Absolutely. the question why is this perfect for us now i also want to quickly say hi to a couple of people here christopher thank you for watching and susan i just want to read this out because susan made a comment here beautiful story of love and laughter uh how it keeps you going it, it, it really is you know really the love and laughter always 
keeps us going even in our darkest hours and even in the very, very dark hours how we just learned in Rodolfo's life. So um, yeah, th thank you for the comments. Thank you for watching. Yeah, thank you, thank I you. Just, um, yeah, I just want to bring it back to you. So you, you're having this uh, literally just lost the entire company, uh, the company that you've built with seven figures, collapsed 20, 20 families, uh, you know, having nothing, no job left, nothing. And you're sitting there at a routine checkup and diagnosis is breast cancer for your wife. So where did you take that from there? I mean, the question itself, as I said, is powerful. Why is this perfect for me now? How did Grace deal with it? How did oh, you both man. deal with it? God, it was it was it was something that I wish nobody will ever go through. You know, Grace's mom passed away with with cancer. My my father mm -hmm. passed away with cancer in two thousand seven as well. But yeah. it was surreal. It was echoing. It was just echoing. It was these words bouncing around the walls, yeah. and I'm like, God, you know, why are you giving me this? And why is this perfect for me? You know, and I remember we got out, it was 6.30 and I remember we, we went at the back of, at the back of, um, of this clinic. So there's my cat here, sorry about that. <laughs> Mine coming through, I love it. Yeah. <laughs> She's got a little bed on the glass the... door going like, why can I not come in? <laughs> um, so we walk out and there's this parking lot in the back of the clinic and our car mm. is in the middle of this parking lot, the only car left. Yeah, and I remember I opened Grace's door of the car, Aww. and she. I turned woman. I love it. <laughs> right, and she, and she, and I just, I just hold her, you know, and I remember saying, um, "Grace, I do not know why this is happening for us. I do not know, and I am scared as you are, because mm. I don't know what to do, but mm. you hold on, because it's gonna get rocky. I know, but I mm. know, and I." But trust me with everything I am, that will be okay. It will be absolutely okay. You know, and I remember I closed the door as she sat in and we went to have a pizza because we did that mm -hmm. every single year at the routine check. We always did that. Yeah. And I said, yeah. I will not change a thing. And, and if I can let you in a secret, sure. which, is, which is, you know, something that I do not know how these things come up, but... You know, when we had a lot of money, we were, you know, we, we were super, super busy, get up really early and, you know, late nights and whatever. Mm. So a lot of time we, we spent, you know, we, we had our favorite place. We used to go for breakfast here and mm. all of that was gone, right? There's no more yeah. breakfast. There's no more nothing. There's no more $300,000 yeah. cars. There's not, there's everything is gone, right? Mm. But for me, what was the goal? was that grace will never ever 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 feel any difference in the comfort of our life so what did i do in the morning i would prepare breakfast for her every morning exactly what she would have at the restaurant and i would prepare and I garnish it on the on the plate and i would grab my my towel and i would oh. i would literally put it around my arm <laughs> And I will grab that plate and bring it to her every single morning. And I will describe to her what's on the plate today. And I serve her coffee and we sit down and have breakfast. For me, the goal was to never feel what we are going through because nothing changes. Mm -hmm. We are not defined by our company. We are not defined by the money. We are not defined by anything but ourselves. And for me, it was a journey. It was just a new journey that spirit had for me for us mm -hmm. and i wanted to make that journey the best one possible because might as well um learn something when we are giving lessons like that right so my teacher yeah. one of my teachers in <laughs> peru always said don't it. sleep in class <laughs> <laughs> i, I get always awesome. so super emotional i'm sorry yeah. about that <laughs> no please so it's like uh, i i get really emotional listening to you here and, and and it's your story. So it, it's absolutely incredible. And, and this is my favorite part so far that you search your breakfast every day and uh, every you know, day. explain also in the play. It's so adorable. You two, absolutely. it's really, really beautiful. So um, how is Grace doing today? Where, where did the cancer story take her? Uh, is she healed? How long did yeah. it take her? Where, 
you know, wow, a billion questions. <laughs> well, see, um, I mean, we didn't tap into that yet, but you know, my journey um, when I when I when after the the, the suicidal attempt and so on I looked for help I mean before that I was on medication I had yeah. psychologists and all that kind of stuff they didn't work for me at all the approach yeah. didn't work it just mm -hmm. you know it, it that's my opinion anyway but it didn't work for me so when I turned around just at the beginning um I um went to an event actually the pivotal point after me this the attempt suicide and all that kind of stuff but then I read a quote, and the quote said, if you do what you have is done, you will get what you have was gotten, right? Yeah. And I'm like, God, that's, ah, oh, man, I get it, right? Mm -hmm. And I looked up, and it was Tony Robbins saying this quote. Mm -hmm. And I had no idea who he was. And I asked my <laughs> wife, you know, do you know this Tony Robbins guy? He goes, yeah, yeah he's an American guy, speaker, whatever. And, it, yeah. and that's what I said to her. I said, do you think he can help me? And I remember her saying, I don't know, but it's worth a try, <laughs> right? Mm. So I looked it up on, on, um, on, um, online, and yeah. a week later, no BS, he's in Sydney holding UPW, right? Mm -hmm. And I booked the tickets and we go. And, um, and this is so crazy, right? But anyway... At the end of it, I'm behind the stage with him dancing with Tony Robbins, right? Dancing wow. with Tony Robbins. Um, because I met his sage's brother, his wife's brother. So we I started talking, I shared my story, and he said, man, you got to meet him. So he brought mm -hmm. me behind the stage, and I met Tony Robbins, and I asked him some, some questions, and all of a sudden, there we are dancing, right? Mm -hmm. Anyway, I got a coach. Okay, I got yeah. a coach and that coach definitely helped me, you know, with the growth of the company, made me feel better. Yeah. It didn't help me heal. See, mm. that's when shamanism came into my life, oh, you know, in yeah, 2011, yeah. you know, and it. all of a sudden um, I had a, a kind of like a, a step back. So my company was thriving, but I went back into my anxiety and yeah. depression, right? Which often happens. It's a lot to tackle both at the same time. Right. So yeah. then I... Um, all of a sudden, one day, it was August, and uh, I'm listening to a podcast, and this man is sharing about blood medicine and, 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 uh, and shamanic rituals in Peru and so on and so forth. Long story short, I start this journey, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, a few years later, yeah, I mean, I, I healed tremendously, and it was just amazing, the experience. But eventually, I was taken under the wing of one of the greatest Wachumeros of Peru mm -hmm. um, passed away two years ago. Mm -hmm. Was a, my biggest teacher, honestly, yeah. one of my biggest teachers, and took me under his wing and taught me everything he knew. Mm -hmm. um, and today, you know, a part of being a coach. So my coaching approach today is a, is a combination of coaching and shamanism. Obviously, people mm -hmm. can come to my rich retreats because they are yeah. all over the world, but the practices come through within the coaching. So I mm -hmm. call it an inner and outer journey. Yeah. Um, you know, that Beautiful. I bring people on. But that was my, mm -hmm. my healing, true healing. And the wisdom yeah. that I acquired came from shamanism. You know? yeah. um, and so when Grace got diagnosed, she decided of not doing any chemotherapy, decided to do wow. nothing but wow. trust me and my work. Wow. So we work incredible with her with plot medicine. And I brought her also to my teachers in Peru. And <laughs> eventually, um, the doctor, which is an amazing doctor, by the way, uh, Dr. Chantel Thornton, um, she's a breast cancer specialist, mm. an amazing human, um, you know, decided to cut out that mass right mm -hmm. but i knew i knew it. she was good she was good i i knew i, I mean my core i just you know but then mm -hmm. december came and we and grace decided look i feel really good i don't feel anything at all and may, maybe i should just take it out i'm like yeah if that's your decision we would do yeah. that and she did right and her operation started at 6 p.m um i think it was a wednesday night 
-hmm. And at 7.30 p.m., I get a call from Dr. Thornton, and she said, Grace is fine. She's absolutely well. Everything went perfect. Um, we took everything out, and when we checked, there was nothing, there was nothing there. Wow. Like, what? She goes, there was nothing there. We, we made an auxiliary clear, a little bit more clearance around her nipple and around that area because it was just strange, but there was nothing there. Nothing. Incredible. Right. Absolutely incredible. I, I just, um, yeah, I'm so blown away by what shamanism can do. And I know, like, I also want to put a little disclaimer in here, you know, I understand Absolutely. when people are watching this that uh, everybody's got a different faith, everybody's Absolutely. got different beliefs. And I think um, what stands out the most for me is, A, we're not making any medical, medical claims here, Absolutely. but it is a story that you have experienced that is your absolute truth and Absolutely. you have lived this. And the trust, that is the one thing that stands out the most for me, your trust in your abilities, what you've been taught in, what you have learned in the medicine and the shaman medicine and Grace's trust in your abilities. This is absolutely incredible. And then she gets the medical proof from Dr. Chantelle Thornton that there was nothing, yeah. nothing left. Like there was no cancer left. This is just incredible. This gives yeah. me goosebumps. I had no idea about that part of the story. So I love when we unpack that life. <laughs> so, oh. I'm yeah. I'm this from the whole time thinking yeah. thinking about it, listening to you. I just really, really love it. I never tapped that far into shamanism. I'm a huge fan of it though. I really my heart is wide open to it. I had quite a few experiences through it, uh, throughout my life myself with various journeys and sweat huts and you name it. Rob and I had a shaman wedding ceremony, which was really oh, beautiful. Oh, nice one. So it's it's very, very close to my heart. And uh yeah, so I, I just really love that you that Oh my God. Is it, is it like, have you ever thought of it that way? Actually, I was just thinking, you know, how you were saved by Grace's laughter by your wife, and then you saved your wife. You both saved each other's lives, like literally. And how many people can actually say that? You know, this is absolutely incredible. Absolutely. You know, she saved you with her laughter, you saved her with your shaman medicine tactics and everything that you've learned. Yeah. It's just so beautiful. I absolutely love it. So, uh, how long did that journey take from her being diagnosed with breast cancer and her having the all okay? Um, that was, so she was diagnosed um, third, uh, third or fifth of October. And mm -hmm. the operation was just before Christmas, the same year. So 2018. Incredible. Yeah. So literally, she got healed, yeah, like diagnosed and healed. So as soon as she was months. diagnosed, I said, "Let's go. We we are, wow. we are uh, going out to Peru. We're going to do some work there." I, uh, you know. Wow. Um. So we went out there, came back, continued on here again, and and so on, so yeah. forth until. And every so often, every month, she will go and get a test done and see MRI and see wow. is it shrinking, is not shrinking, whatever. Uh, and the doctor would say, hey, you need to take this medicine, you need to do chemo, you need to do radiation, you're going to think about this, that, about that. And Grace would say, no, I'm good, I'm good. I'm not going to, I'm going to just keep checking and so on and so forth. And yeah. then at the end, you know, um, Chantal Thornton said, what about we just take it out, right? Mm. And, uh, and so Grace said, what do you think, you know? And I'm like, mm. what do you think, right? Yeah. Um, and she's Said, yeah, maybe, maybe I could just, you know, take it out and and you know it, yeah. it right. And I said, rock and roll, let's do it. whatever it is. You're the captain yeah. of the ship, and we do whatever the captain says. So um, yeah. but it, you know, one of the things that I have probably this the strength, the strongest thing that grew in my life, especially the last 10 years, is faith. Yeah. I just know. Don't ask me how or why, but I just know that everything is always going to be okay. It's mm -hmm. always going to be as perfect as it has to be. And that's, yeah. I do not care if I lose a company or not a company or if whatever happens, yeah. I know it's going to be <laughs> absolutely amazing. Just yeah. hang in there, get up in the morning, have a purpose, have faith, trust yeah. the journey, don't rush the journey and enjoy <laughs> the ride. It's gonna be yeah. a good one. 
one that we can tell see i love it i absolutely love your message so that's exactly why i wanted to have you here rodolfo i'm really really happy that you're with us sharing this story this is this is an absolute incredible story i have no words um rodolfo i've never asked you this may i ask is your mom still alive my mom I know that your dad passed yeah. yeah and how is your relationship with your mom these absolutely days absolutely amazing oh. So I, I reconnected with my mom when I was 47, so five yeah. years ago. Okay, there wow. was a moment where healing happens through forgiveness. Mm. See? So, yeah. and it doesn't happen with blame. It doesn't happen yeah. with because of this, because of that. So mm. the way I did that, which is, again, I mean, you know, thinking about it, life is just an absolutely freaking amazing journey. So how we did that is I said, okay, I got to reconnect to my mom because our, our conversations will be once every three, four weeks. Hey, mom, mm. how are you doing? Yeah, good. How's mm. work? Yeah, it's good. Mm. Okay. How's Grace? Yeah, she's well. What's the weather like? Mm. Yeah, the weather, you know, it's kind of like, yeah. How are you doing? Yeah. Yeah, I'm good. You know, I'm getting old. <laughs> oh, um, okay. Um, Mom, listen, I gotta go. Um, but it's you know awesome, and uh, I'll talk to you soon. Cool. All right, bye. That was the mm. conversation for 47 years of my life. Right. Yeah. So then I said, yeah. okay, how do I first of all, who do I want to become? Mm -hmm. Not where I want to go, but who do I need to become to be able mm. to get to wherever it is I want to go? That's the first yeah. part. And second, what do I need to do to make that happen? One of the mm -hmm. biggest things for me was to get rid of that energy, get rid of that, that thing. I wanted mm -hmm. a mother. I always suffered about it. So mm -hmm. I have the capabilities to maybe make it happen. And I'm sure she wanted a son and she wanted to be a connection, have a connection with the son. Mm -hmm. So let me do the, the job here. So what I did is I invited my mother to come to Australia. I just right. wanted to ask you this. Was she still in Italy or in Switzerland at the she time? She was in Italy. She, they yeah. retired in 1993. So my parents went back to Italy in 1993. So they went back to Italy, yeah. But then my, and they actually came to visit in 2004 down here in mm -hmm. Australia with my father. Wow. But then my father passed away in 2007. Yeah. So in 2015, I said to her, okay, listen, uh, I'd love for you to come. I didn't say why or whatever. I said, you know, mm -hmm. come down, blah, 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 whatever, whatever. And she said, you know, after couple of months of the, you know getting over the fear and everything the flying or whatever she said okay mm -hmm. yeah that's cool so what did i do um i told grace to go and pick her up mm -hmm. right not me but grace mm -hmm. and i said to grace we will meet in las vegas so i flew to <laughs> vegas grace flew to milan picked up my mom stayed a day flew out of milan to new york to las vegas my mom is thinking she's coming to australia my yeah. mom is 80 80, 80 83 hang on she's 88 now seven yeah. years ago or five years ago so 83 right yeah. a little town in italy doesn't know the three thousand people town in italy has no clue where what is right where where is it that your parents she's are in brescia like garda yeah. Right. Okay. So beautiful. Yeah. yeah. It's so right? beautiful. So there. they are flying mm. into New York overnight, sleep mm -hmm. in a hotel, fly out of New York into Vegas, and there mm -hmm. I am. Okay. So my mom comes out of the plane, uh, come the baggage. I'm there. Right. Oh, big hugs. Blah blah blah. You know, beautiful to see her and whatever. It's been many, mm -hmm. many years didn't see her. And we go to the car, the rental car. We have like an SUV, and my mom is like, you know, my mom is. is Tiny, you know, five, Italian size, you know, <laughs> and she's holding her bag, you know, next to her. She's absolutely destroyed, she's tired, right? Yeah, and she looks at the car and she goes, Oh, this is a beautiful car. Oh, congratulations, this is so beautiful, you know. And I'm like, Yeah, yeah, thank you, thank you, thank you. So we jump into the car, and we had, um, at the time, we still had our company and everything was well. Mm -hmm. So we had a, 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 a beautiful suite at the, at the Venetian. Mm -hmm. And we arrived at the Venetian. So she, we're driving, you know, along the boulevard in, in mm -hmm. Vegas. 
And she's looking around, right? And she's like, oh, this looks very different than it was, you know, a bunch of years, 10 okay. years ago, yeah. right? Uh, um, and I'm like, hey, you know, things change, whatever, mm -hmm. right? So we arrive at, at the Venetian, at the valet park at the Venetian, and we get out, the guy opens the door and she's standing there and she's like, and I said, do you know where you are? And she goes, no. I said, you're in Las Vegas, you're in America, mom. She said, what? In America? <laughs> no, <laughs> in America. So we're entering the, the foyer in the, uh, the Venetian, which is absolutely mind blowing. Mm. And we, 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 we escorted to our, to our suite and we, we actually shared the suite together. It was just amazing, right? Mm. And from there, we went to LA, stayed a, a few weeks in LA, and then we came home. And the so moment what's the significance home, around why Vegas? Why why did you want to take her there? Just as I got married, or... we got married in Vegas. Okay, oh that's beautiful. right. So I wanted to show her when we got married yeah. and so on and so forth, the Bellagio yeah. and all that kind of stuff, right? Yeah. But also, my mom never been to the US, and you know, yeah. I wanted to, you know, Fair Marie, enough. I wanted to create memories. I wanted to make mm. this very very special because we were about to reconnect, and for yeah. me that needed to be in a grandiose way possible yeah. something that we will remember on the yeah. last day of our life mm. but that was a fun part then we came home we came to australia and she stayed five months in australia and wow. i do not think we went out more than five times mm -hmm. all the time we stay home talking mm -hmm. talking mm -hmm. talking 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 mm -hmm. getting to know each other forgiving 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 growing growing crying 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 mm -hmm. crying 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 mm -hmm. laughing hugging i love you mm -hmm. i love you i love you mother i love you mom i love you mm -hmm. i love you rodolfo i love mm -hmm. you i love you and it's been i love you since yeah. wow. today we are it's beautiful. We speak every night over Skype and yeah. you know, it's, it's an absolute journey, but you've got to let go. You have yeah. to let go of that red hot coal that is burning you and mm. you just let it go. Yeah. It's, it's going to burn through your flesh, through your bones. It's gonna I would like to bit. say something here. It, it, it's so beautiful, Rodolfo, because, uh, you know, I, I talk a lot about forgiveness and letting go as well. And, and we also got a really beautiful comment here. I'm just looking down when we get comments. Forgiveness is the greatest form of love. It absolutely is, Suzanne. It's really beautiful. Uh, thank you, Shalina. Shalina says beautiful as well. So a lot of people are just really taken away by that story, which I can so you know, relate to. I'm sitting here listening to you, like completely blown away. And when it comes to forgiveness um, and letting go of things, so many people struggle with that. And I, for myself, struggle with it for many, many years, not knowing and always being puzzled by how can people use the words just and letting go in the same sentence. How do you just let go? You know, how do you just let go? Until I understood it and then I realized how easy it is once you focus on the right things and here's the thing most people focus on the letting go and how do I let go and how can I let go of this when 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 you know but that's the wrong focus mm -hmm. when you focus on love this is when you let go yeah. it just happens because the focus is on love and not the letting go when you focus on love the forgiveness happens and you're not focusing on how can I forgive this but you know you're back in the what you're not forgiving so mm -hmm. when you focus on love the forgiveness and the letting go happens along the way when you keep your focus on love and the same thing i want to say applies to healing and grief that's why i always call my journey my healing journey mm -hmm. most people call it their grieving journey mm -hmm. the focus is on grief and it's really a lot harder to let go of the grief or to heal the grief if your focus is on the grief if you focus on the healing, mm. the grieving happens along the way anyway. Absolutely. And that to me is the most beautiful part. That's why I wanted to um, just quickly pause you there. I just really love how your focus was on love. Your focus was on creating happy and incredibly important and beautiful memories for your mom, for you. 
and uh, and all the talking, you know, it's just really beautiful that you have that time that you created that time and that she's still in your life now. I'm really, really happy oh, to hear that. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. You know, I think also the letting go part is very important. I mean, I do, you know, mm. monthly retreats that people come. I mean, now because of what's going on, they are more local uh, people. Mm. Where before yeah. I had people flying in from all around the world, really. Um, mm. And, you know, that letting go part, most people come for that, you know, whatever that yeah. let it go is. Yeah. But very important, a part of absolutely, you know, the approach is love, um, 100%. Yes. But also understanding what are we letting go of? Mm. Right? If, if, you, if you do not know what you're letting go of, yeah. you can't let it go. You know, mm. what is that story? What is yeah. that? What <laughs> it makes is so much that? sense. It sounds so simple, yet it's not. Mm. And it makes so much oh, sense when you say that. Right? Becoming aware of what we actually want to let go of. It's yeah. incredible. What is that yeah. thing? You know, and, mm. and, and, and all of a sudden, you enter this interaction with this energy. I mean, for me, everything is energy, but mm -hmm. you enter this interaction with a teacher. See, all of a sudden, the grief, all of a sudden, the pain, all of a sudden, all of that, there is a teacher within there. Mm -hmm. So if we want to let go of something, we are throwing away everything. We're mm -hmm. throwing away a part of us. And there, mm -hmm. uh, and there remains a void. And that's yeah. pain and yeah. unknowing right so what we do in what people do in their retreat in the retreats and what you know the guidance that they receive not from me but from you know the the traditions and and the rituals mm -hmm. that i follow and so on and so forth is to embrace that is actually to mm -hmm. go right in there and give pain perhaps so much love to turn it into happiness so mm. you understand what is that teacher who is that teacher what mm. am i not seeing it's like when yeah. grace's cancer happened why is it perfect for me now mm. what do i need to learn who are you what's your name because i know you're a teacher you've just mm. chosen me right now i need to know why is yeah. this perfect for me? And I remember when Grace at the beginning, you know, the shock comes in and mm. there was a moment of why me, right? Yeah. And I remember saying to her, why not you? Who would you give oh, wow. this to? Who mm. would you give this cancer to? Why mm. not you? And all of a sudden it's like, That's wow. That's quite tough word to say, but it is right? incredible. Yeah. Powerful. All of a sudden it was like, yeah, why not mm. me? I can freaking yeah. do this. I've been down those cards. I can play them. Play. Yeah. Don't throw the cards in. Play. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Um, and that's what life has become for me. You know, for my clients, the people I work with. I say, what's yeah. your cards? Play them. Mm. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. Yeah. Have fun. You know? Yeah. It's, it's not over yet. Long not. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And yeah, so... That's that's the, the, the yeah that's in the category. Yeah, yeah kind of go out. <laughs> <laughs> but but yeah, so this is incredible, you know. Um, yeah, that's why I love being here because I read your you know your bio on on Podman. Mm. I'm like, whoa, this this is powerful. This is someone yeah. that knows, someone that has yeah. felt it, someone that has had to go through it. You know, mm. those are the people I you know I call us life artists we are the mm. artists of our life we use all the colors that life has given us and we put yeah. them on a canvas behind <laughs> you behind me paint yeah, the masterpiece yeah. that is our life use everything don't throw nothing away yeah you know because yeah. it's spirituality everything is like oh just oh, let go let go you mm. know oh it's not, you know i have sometimes people that come to our retreats like oh i got this energy but it's not mine it's someone it's like really who is it why are you carrying it? Why yeah. is it someone else's? Why not yours? Yeah. Yeah. And you know, are we scared? Oh, we, we want to be light. We want to be light. Mm. Too much light, you got to burn. Too yeah. much darkness, you got to get blinded because you can't yeah. see. Yeah. Together, it's beautiful. It's a yeah. masterpiece, like behind you, behind me. A masterpiece yeah. comes together with the balance of shadows and lights. And mm -hmm. the best artists in the world have 
had the ability to create the balance between shadows and light. And we travel all around the world to have a look at those masterpieces. It's that is the same like for my, our life. I we'll absolutely love it. Together. We've got another little comment here. Um, powerful indeed to surrender. And on the cards we are dealt because we choose to play uh, the game. Yeah, that's absolutely, yeah, absolutely, absolutely correct here. Um, I love the way you look at life. I absolutely do. And I wish that everybody could do that in that way. I think there is, well, I shouldn't say I think, I know there's a lot of magic that happens when you look at your adversity like a blank canvas. You know, this is my number one reason why I called my program the blank canvas because I see it exactly like you just said. And um, we, we all have that canvas. We all have the choice what colors we use, what we paint on it. And we all have the choice to either give up when we are hit with adversity or to pick up those cards and play. Absolutely. And that is something that I chose very consciously. So I never saw it as I, I had to go through. I saw it as I chose to go through. I really chose to go through that and to take what life had offered me and to turn it into something really powerful and amazing. I had no idea what in the first couple of days or weeks, of course, you know, but those doors were open for me along the way mm. all the time. Like I stayed clear on my path of, I want to create happiness for those boys. I, I want to create a really amazing life for them. And everything else was presented to me along the way. It was literally like somebody just handed it to me. I felt very blessed, very looked after. And this is the one thing that I felt all along. I'm always looked after. I really feel like quite strongly. And uh, I can see that you have got that same philosophy. I, I really wish we could meet Grace right now. She's just so, <laughs> I, like, just, I, just, I just saw her. Um, I just <laughs> saw her because she, she does candles and she works with crystals oh, and all that beautiful. kind of stuff. So she's, beautiful. I just saw her run past to throw something <laughs> away. So she's in garage. I know she got her earplug. Yeah. On, so I can't call her because she wouldn't That's hear. Fine. If you want, That's I can fine. go and, and get her to say hello. I'd, but, I'd uh, actually love that. But before we do, I want to really, um, I want to really ask you a couple more things in terms sure. of um, when I when I get people here in this interview. We've got about uh, a few minutes left. When I get people into this interview, I always want them to please feel free to share whatever links, whatever offers you have, how people can get in touch with you in the comments below the video. So Rodolfo, I'm gonna invite you. I think I've already invited you to come into this group. So after the interview, I'd really like for you to come back to this interview in the group and share whatever links you have that people can actually get in touch with you because I really love what you do. And if people are intrigued to, hear more about you or invite you for an interview or do something with you in terms of working with you then um, they have the opportunity to get in touch with you so are there any final words of wisdom anything to wrap up today that you would like to share with us before we spring this upon grace and get her in front of the camera i'd really love to meet her it would be so lovely we haven't even talked about this beforehand otherwise she could have been prepared but i hope she'll be okay to come in and say hi quickly um, yeah, final words of wisdom before we go and get great. You know, I, I think um, what I can say is just be you, you know, just yeah. be yourself. Don't be, a, don't be ashamed of your story. Mm. You know, don't be ashamed of that story. Yeah. You know, that, that mess that we think is sometimes our life, turn mm. that into your message. Because yeah. every story is so powerful. And if you can stay behind it and have yeah. faith, I believe yeah. faith is the biggest, the, the, the main component of life is having faith mm. and knowing that it's going to be okay. This is going to be yeah. amazing. And when you feel lost, when you feel a little bit in this place, yeah. which all we all do, right? Yeah. I, I do, you know. <laughs> um, why is that perfect for me now? Yeah. Why is this perfect for me now? Right. This is such a powerful question. I absolutely love it. Right. And then mm. instead of saying, I have to do this, I get to do this. Because we don't yeah. have to do anything. We don't have yeah. to do absolutely anything in our life. 
we get to. And mm -hmm. there's thousands upon thousands of people that didn't get the chance this yeah. morning to get up, but we do. Yeah. So whatever mm -hmm. it is that you will need to do in your life, start with, I get to do this today. I get to mm -hmm. do this right now. And why is this perfect for me? Why is the lesson? Right. Absolutely incredible. It's such beautiful, you know, it's all about shifting your perspective and that is a Absolutely. really beautiful perspective. So um, how about we get Grace in front of the camera quickly before let, we wrap this let up. Let me go I and really get it. Really love that. Yes, 20 seconds. Absolutely. Yes, 20, 19, just kidding. <laughs> oh, I absolutely love this. I didn't even plan to do this, but, you know, after listening to Rodolfo's story, I really had this urge to meet Grace. So I think it's really beautiful if he can get her in front of the camera here quickly. I'm just checking if there are any other comments before we wrap this up. Thank you so much, everybody, for watching. I really love having you here. And I really, truly hope you enjoyed listening to Rodolfo as much as I do. Hey, Grace. Hi. <laughs> That's Marie. Sorry to Hi, how are you going? You. It is so lovely to meet you. I just, yes, I, we, we didn't have that plan at all, but after Rodolfo shared his entire story, how uh, he was saved by the laughter of grace, we decided that will be the new book title. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> We just, we just had to meet you and uh, it's really beautiful to see you and I just absolutely love that your husband saved your life as well. It is so heartwarming and it is such an honour to have you both here in front of the camera. We had quite a few people watching and commenting and, and really, really loving your story. So Thank I just you. wanted to quickly say hi to you and it's so beautiful to see you. Thank you, making you. Candles. much love. Yes, thank you so much. <laughs> April, April is on. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Yes. Completely unprepared. So thank you so much for coming okay. in and saying thank hi. Thank you. Just send me um, for some details and I might send you a sample of one of the candles. So. Oh, my God, you're yeah. so beautiful. Yeah. You're so beautiful. I would absolutely love that. And uh, come on, we do a quick plug for your candle business as well. What's your candle business Okay, name? so it's the Angels of Grace. Oh, uh, Oh my god! Ironically, I, cry. <laughs> I love it. I absolutely love it. Yeah, that's so, very beautiful. Um, so yeah, they can find me on Instagram or Facebook or Perfect. Grace Angeli. Yeah, we, we're gonna we're gonna post an Insta handle for that as well in the comments below, so you can all find her. I usually <laughs> never do that, but since we sprung that upon you and grabbed you away from your candle making, I thought I have to give your business a plug as well. So thank you, <laughs> thank you, so much, much love for to you. Thanks, Cindy. much love to you. Thanks. Oh. Much love. Thank Bye. you. Have a beautiful day. Too, and Rodolfo, I cannot thank you enough for everything that you shared here today. I feel so blessed to have had you here in this interview. And I'm really looking forward to uh, coming to you on your podcast. It's just really beautiful. We will share the link to the podcast of Rodolfo as well. And uh, whatever website contact possibilities, opportunities you have for people. And we will share the Insta handle for Grace's business as well. So with that being said, thank you so, so much for being here. I really, really um, appreciate your time, your wisdom, your beautiful perspectives and your beautiful life story. And uh, yeah, this is Rodolfo and Marie signing off. Thank you so much for watching. Thank Bye you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Bye. Bye.